There's an interesting difference between Christianity and other theistic worldviews that claim to say something about God. Um, unlike other systems that are really a collection of pr proverbs, um, and I always refer back to a friend of mine in high school who was a Baha'i, and he introduced me to the writings of Baha'u'llah, and these are great, beautiful writings, but they are a set of proverbs. There's, there are no claims about history that can be tested. It's really hard to test systems that are simply wisdom statements. It's kind of hard to test the wisdom statements of Buddha, for example, because there's no claims in Buddhism that are grounded in historical events. But Christianity is different. It's not just a claim that includes wisdom statements, but it's a claim about something that happened in the first century called the resurrection of Jesus. That's a claim you can test. You can't, claim, you can't test wisdom statements, but you can test claims about history. And we typically return to eyewitnesses when we ask questions about things that happened in the past. And that's what's so great about Christianity is it's so dependent upon the eyewitness status, the eyewitness nature of evidence. It's called direct evidence. That's the only form of direct evidence, eyewitness accounts. And what you'll see is that Jesus himself uses this direct evidence. Um, he talks and he makes claims to his audience, but he also uses indirect evidence when he says, if you don't believe what I'm saying, at least believe on the evidence of these miracles I'm working in front of you. Uh, and then he picks a set of followers. And what's the basis for his selection of those disciples? Well, he tells them, you are to be my eyewitnesses. Look, you, you saw all this stuff that happened here, and, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna testify everywhere about what you saw. And as a matter of fact, when one of them is uh, no longer with the group, Judas. They need to replace Judas in Acts chapter one. How do they replace Judas? Well, they say, okay, guys, get together. Tell me, all of you, who has been here since the baptism and saw it all the way through to the resurrection of Jesus? We need an eyewitness. The person who replaces Judas is selected on the basis of his ability to testify as an eyewitness. Then you see in the book of Acts that how are they evangelizing the, the known world in the, in the first century? On the basis of their eyewitness testimony. They'll typically say, hey, the Old Testament predicts these five things and we saw it happen with our own eyes. This reliance on eyewitness, as a matter of fact, your New Testament is a collection of books that first and foremost were written by who? By eyewitnesses. There were a lot of books that were used in the first century in the local churches that were very beautiful, but they weren't eyewitness accounts and they don't make it into the canon of scripture. For example, the Shepherd of Hermas, First Clement. These are all beautiful books, but they weren't written by eyewitnesses, so they're not in the canon. What's in the canon are eyewitness accounts. Eyewitness accounts that God gave us for a reason, because we can test eyewitnesses. And we can test them on the basis of, you know, were they really there? Can they be corroborated? Uh, are they biased? Have they changed their story? These are the ways we test eyewitnesses. You and I, if we're Christians, we actually happen to be in the one theistic worldview that could be tested on the strength of its eyewitness testimony.